iCube is one of the most practical e-scooters in the Indian market, selling more than 2 lakh units already and helping TVS reach a market share of 23% in the Indian e-scooter space. Now TVS is upping the game with the X. It's larger than the TVS iCube. It looks sportier with all these sharp body panels and of course that big frame that you see right here. It's got a huge battery pack. It's also got a huge infotainment screen. So performance, connectivity, looks, it promises everything. So is this the ideal scooter to buy if you are looking for an electric in the performance segment? Or is that huge price tag going to weigh it down? Let's find out. Getting to the core of the matter, the TVS X is equipped with a 4.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, an evolution of the iCube's battery, featuring 126 cells instead of 98. The battery capacity is second only to the simple one. But why does it still offer lesser range? Well, because it's all about priorities. The TVS X prioritizes performance over outright range to go with its sporty intent. And that's the reason why the range takes a hit. The other reason is the weight. It's 124 kilos, which makes it one of the heaviest in its category. With three ride modes for economical, normal and sporty riding, you can enjoy top speeds of up to 50, 70 and 105 kilometers an hour respectively. Even the stealth or the eco mode feels brisk, unlike some of its competitors, but struggles on inclines. The riding modes, however, are not going to alter the levels of regen, which otherwise can be manually adjusted between level 1 to level 5, 5 being the strongest. It's so strong at that, that combined with the stealth mode, riding in the city environment at those slow speeds, you may not ever need to touch the brakes. It's reminiscent of single pedal driving in electric cars. Charging is where the TVS X shines further because it also supports 3 kilowatt fast charging. That charger, however, is around 16,000 rupees, give or take, which I don't think is worth it. Unless, of course, you have 70, 80 kilometers of commute a day, you're in an extra urban kind of a riding cycle, then it might just make sense for you. Otherwise, with a 95 kilometer range, your usual commutes are going to be taken care of just fine. So the regular, the standard 3-pin plug with its 4.5-hour charging time should be okay, is what I feel. The TVS X has a sporty look with sharp body panels, stylish lighting and a unique twin spa aluminium frame. However, the frame limits storage to 19 litres in the boot, which is too small even for my helmet, but good enough for a few groceries or the charging equipment. And that brings me to things I do not like. Apart from the shallow storage space, what I don't like is the plasticky feel that this motorcycle gives you. Almost everything looks a bit plasticky, though this is actually metal, aluminium. But it, the colours used, it just looks a bit gaudy and plasticky for my liking. In fact, even these little panels right here, which are technically supposed to protect the levers in case the 124 kilos becomes a bit too heavy for you, even that is plastic. I don't think it's really going to protect anything. In fact, just see how easily it just gets out of the way. So not something that I like. What I also don't like are the mirrors. Very difficult to adjust and don't usually give me the kind of visibility that I want. They could have been wider and they could have been a little bit easy. It's more form over function. Surprisingly, the TVS X appears larger than its dimensions suggest with a convenient seat height of 770 millimeters. That front seat height might sound low to you, but even for taller riders, taller than my height of 5 feet 8, ergonomics are not a problem at all. In fact, you can see he is over 6 feet tall, his knees are nowhere close to the apron or close to the handlebars. So ergonomics are completely sorted. In fact, the front seat is so long that it even gives you enough room to move around and get a comfortable seating posture. Even the rear seat, nice and wide. A little tall, but not too tall. So even for your family, it's not going to be bad at all. However, for ladies who might want to side saddle, it's not really going to be effective because you do get a sari guard. It's not on this particular vehicle, but you do get a sari guard, but it doesn't have a side step. So they are not going to be able to side saddle. You do, however, get these very lovely, very nicely designed foot pegs. Reminds me of the Ducati Diavel. The TVS X features a split seat setup 
but it isn't customizable like the Vida V1. However, it offers a superior build quality and a sportier design. Boasting 175mm of ground clearance, the TVS X should handle rough roads well, but with a slightly firmer ride. The side mounted monoshock doesn't hamper handling. The X comes with specially developed low resistance single compound Euro grip tyres that offer decent grip and are the sole tyre option available currently. Tech savvy riders or riders who believe why should car guys have all the fun with the infotainment systems, they are going to absolutely love this colossal 10.25 inch screen. And it is an infotainment screen, it's not just a typical speedometer with a little bit of other data, it actually is very feature rich. Let's come to the software in a bit, but in terms of the hardware, you can see you can also tilt it to your liking. So depending on your height, depending on your riding stance, depending on the position of the sun, etc., you can actually change the angle, which I quite like. Now, the other bit with these kind of screens that I do not like with a lot of new electric vehicles is that the locking mechanism is usually tied into these screens, right? You can lock, unlock from the screen or using a cell phone or using your watch, etc., which the TVS allows you. Good functionality. But what happens if you have kept the scooter without charging for a really, really long time, which by the way, for this scooter is around 100 days. You can leave the scooter for about 100 days and you'll still have enough charge left in the batteries to be able to at least start the scooter, start the charging, etc. But if it takes longer than that, say six months, for some reason you're unable to charge the scooter. And when you come back and try to unlock them, nothing works because the system simply doesn't work. There is no juice left, right? Which is why TVS is also going to be providing an NFC card which will essentially allow you to at least open the charging socket so you can at least get the charging. You can also unlock the scooter so maybe you can uh, you know, at least push it to the charging uh, station or the charging slot, charge the scooter and then every fun other functionality will be available to you. So that manual override is very important and TVS is offering it. The software is TVS's proprietary and the here maps are particularly interesting. Take a listen to a part of the presentation. I just go to the section, I click share button, I pick up my favorites, let's say I get, I send this location to Ram and the vehicle says. Now Ram here gets a real time tracking location of the vehicle on his WhatsApp as a link. So he opens that, browser opens and then it continuously updates the vehicle location at all times. So it's easier. I don't have to drain the battery of my phone to be able to communicate where I am, how much time will it take and so on and so forth. The vehicle does it for me. It will also allow you to play games, though there is no app store at the moment. So you'll only be able to play the games or use the apps that TVS has provided at the moment. You can also watch videos if you want. Now, all of this only works when the motor is switched off. That's a safety thing, of course, and I'm glad TVS has done it that way. So when you're charging, when you're just whiling away time and the vehicle's not running, you can do that. But that said, I can already imagine a lot of people watching YouTube shots when they are simply waiting at a traffic light. I've seen that happen on the cell phone, so it's definitely going to happen here on the screen as well. But we, as Overdrive, we prefer IG Reels. That gives us a slightly longer duration and we keep churning out a ton of reels which we keep posting on our Instagram. So if you don't follow us already, please do give us a follow at ODMag on Instagram. The X features an 11 kilowatt motor, one of the most powerful in its segment. That electric motor has a distinctive soundtrack. It sounds a bit chirpy at city speeds and then it transitions to that typical electric motor whine as the speeds rise. And then there is also the ram air cooling duct for the motor, which further adds to that soundtrack. And speaking of cooling, now the batteries, they get their own cooling system. It's an air-cooled battery pack. So from the outside, you get the air flowing, which cools the batteries. And then the battery pack itself has two different battery modules. And there's a third air channel between the two modules, which you can see from here. So that is where the air enters from for further cooling. But that has me worried because that's also going to collect a lot of debris. It might also become home for insects, reptiles, rodents, etc. Making pressure washing and cleaning a mandatory and a frequent affair. So how does the TVS X perform on the road? Well, I'm speculating because all of our ride was on TVS's test track. 
in a nutshell though, it rides impressively, particularly in the sporty department. The TVSX reminds me of the Yama Aerox in many ways, like its motorcycle-like stability through the bends or even this frame which allows you to have a much more aggressive body positioning compared to the regular scooters which don't get this. Of course, you'll not be able to put a cylinder in here because of the frame, but that's not the intent. And where it really differentiates itself from the Aerox is the kind of power delivery that it gives you. With that electric motor, it's much smoother. The power delivery is much more linear. And electric motors are known for their instantaneous torque, right? But despite that, the power delivery is nice and smooth. You can exit the corner, you can get on the power a lot earlier and a lot harder and with a lot more confidence. And still the scooter doesn't lose its way very easily. That's how good the electronics package is. In fact, what I realized on this little test track is that while exiting the left at a little too much lean, I was noticing that the power, the acceleration wasn't as on tap as some of the other corner entries. And that's because, again, at higher lean angles, it's trying to measure the power that it's sending through to ensure that there's better traction and a safer corner exit. The safety features include a single channel ABS, which is a segment first, hill hold, and the TVS Smart Shield system. There's no denying that the TVS X comes at a hefty price tag, but it also covers new ground in terms of performance, handling, connectivity, etc. At the same time, it builds on that proven TVS reliability of its new electric powertrain, something that we've already sampled with the iCube and are quite happy about. So the experience of owning an even bigger and an even more powerful TVS electric should be a stress-free one. Now, of course, it could have done better in terms of practicality, uh, especially in the storage department. But then again, that's not the intent. It is that of a sporty scooter in the EV space. And I think it fulfills that intent quite beautifully. And in doing that, it opens new doors for EV enthusiasts. Mm.